Hey, it's Ken Lewis. Welcome back to Audio School Online. Uh, this lesson is called Coloring Boxes. It could just as easily be called Idea Machines or Creative Inspirations. Uh, I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to uh, color and manipulate sounds in non-traditional ways. Uh, you know, not using any equalizers, uh, but still uh, really altering sounds. You know, sometimes I'm going, I'm going to show you just subtle ways to make something sound much better without uh, reaching for equalization. Sometimes I'm going to teach you how to turn an apple into an orange or turn, you know, a sound that, that may be like a little boring or lackluster, or uninteresting, and find different ways to make it much more interesting or creative. Uh, a lot of these techniques are really effective, especially in, in things like transitions of a song, where you may have, you know, at the end of a chorus, you have just like a two-bar breakdown before you're back into verse two, and it's just, you know, this boring nothing happening for two bars, and you don't want to lose the listener's interest, you know, what do you do? Uh, you know, I'll show you uh, different ways to take maybe scenarios like that and turn them into much more interesting things or to take, you know, a boring lead vocal and maybe just for a, 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 you know, a split second or a line or two in the middle of a song, turn it into something really interesting and attention grabbing to bring the listener back uh, into your song and just to, you know, keep everything interesting and creative. So, you know, for producers, this may be a great way to show you uh, ways to, to find fresh new ideas to build beats off of or to write songs off of or you know if you're stuck creatively in the middle of a of a beat and you know it's just not coming together and you, you can't think of any new ideas you know maybe you open up this lesson and go through it and kind of uh, try a bunch of different uh, techniques on this with some of the sounds in your own session and all of a sudden you know something is going to spark you with a new idea and uh, you know maybe that'll kind of move your beat along as a mix engineer you know it's the same way a lot of times you're faced with this you know like I said like a transition that's just not very interesting or like a, a song that just really needs some help and uh, and you want to find a really creative way to just catch ears be it for a moment or for a full song uh, and I'm going to show you a lot of different ways to do that I'm I'm using a bunch of different plugins in this that you may not have, you probably don't have. Uh, the idea is not to show you specific, you know, this is how you use a flanger, or this is how you use a distortion box. Uh, this is more for showing you the, the breadth of ideas uh, that you can bring to the table as a producer or a mixer or as an artist to keep things interesting and to spark creativity and to create your own unique sounds and you know help you maybe even craft your own identity uh, and uh, so yes I am going to show you how to do each of these things and what the techniques are behind them uh, but the main point you know there's there's 200 million different ways that you can uh, you know creatively color sounds so if you're kind of new on the come up I'm going to give you a lot of like ideas that you probably never thought of that you may not have even known were possible uh, I'm going to show you those. You know, if you're more established and more experienced, maybe you just need some more tricks for your toolkit. I'm going to throw a lot of stuff at you. There's going to be things in here that are going to resonate and you're going to be like, I had no idea that you could do that with sound. This is the coolest thing ever. Uh, and one of the things I'm going to start with is while, uh, while I was putting this lesson together was a super aha moment for me. Uh, with these strings that you're hearing playing in the background, what I'm about to show you when I when I did it, uh, I, it was an aha moment for me. I was just like, I can't believe I just did that. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have this, you know, boring string pad. Sounds nice. It's live, full live strings, uh, just playing kind of pad. So my first thought was, you know, well, what if I wanted this to be in a different key? So, uh, so I took, I just copied the same strings, and I'm going to put just a standard pitch plug-in on them, so you could show, the, like, the quick and dirty way to do this, pitch. 
So, you know, every DAW has a pitch plug-in, uh, you know, every single one does. And then there's a bunch of third-party uh, pitch plug-ins. This is your standard Pro Tools plug-in. I'm going to take it up 200 cents or two semitones and see what it sounds like. Already just 200 cents up, you're starting to hear a little bit of artifacts in it, a little bit of graininess in the sound. We'll take it up 400 cents. You hear already how torn up that sound is. Actually, actually I gotta say, this is really cool. It, 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 uh, it, this sounds almost like trem strings or tremolo strings. Uh, it's really just torn up, but I think if you put this into a, like a full mix, it would be more of like a trem string effect, which is not what I was trying to achieve. But uh, again, these are idea machines. Like these are just creative things that you stumble upon. Now let me take it up a full octave so you can see really how horrible these pitch plugins are at uh, at you know doing severe things. All right, so let's get rid of the pitch plug-in. That sounds awful. Now I'm going to go to the best pitch plug-in ever created so far. Uh, in Pro Tools, you find it in Audio Suite. Uh, well, this is a third-party plug-in. Serato Pitch and Time Pro. They also make uh, Pitch and Time LE, which, I don't know, it's probably just as good. Uh, now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go up four semitones which is 400 cents, which is the second thing that I did with the Pro Tools Pitch Plugin. I'm going to render that, and let's listen to that. Wow, that's smooth as silk. You don't hear any of that kind of torn upness about the sound. Let's take it up eight more semitones, 800 cents more, which it will make it a full octave above where it originally started. And listen to how smooth this still is. That's a full octave up from where it started. 12 semitones up, 1200 cents above its source sound, and it just sounds so smooth. I had no idea before I started putting this lesson together that even Serato was this good. Uh, and this, once I did this, uh, it sparked some creativity with me. I was like, holy cow, well if I can take a live string section and pitch it up an octave, I wonder what that would sound like blended with the original source, which is this. So here's the source, and here's the pitch and the source together. To me that is like mind-blowing. Like, that I just figured out, just putting this lesson together, and I've been making records 21 years, and this was a total surprise that I could take, you know, like these beautiful lush string pads and pitch them up an octave and blend them with the original source, and it would be this like bigger, fuller, uh, big string section. I had no idea. This is like the coolest technique that I've thought of in a long time. Okay, so there is trick number one with the pitch. Now I'm going to show you uh, a bunch of ways to take standard strings and really make them feel like those kind of like old movie strings or like, you know, kind of the strings from like the 30s or 40s, something you'd hear off an old record. Uh, the first plug-in I'm starting with is, uh, this is a free one actually, Isotope Vinyl. Really, really cool. So here's the source sound. And then vinyl, you see it's got all these dates, 1930, 50s, 60s, 70s. I'm going to take it all, let's start at the 30s and just see what it sounds like.
beautiful. Now, of course, all those old 1930s and 50s strings, whatever, were all cut in really big, beautiful sounding live rooms. So the next thing I'm going to put after the isotope vinyl is a, a lexicon hall. Just a standard medium hall. Any reverb would do fine with this. Uh, I just happen to love the lexicon stuff and it sounds amazing, so here we are. Uh, so I'm going to start with a medium hall and I'm going to put this on mix zero. So right now you're hearing all uh, strings and no reverb and then I'll just move the fader up to change the wet dry balance and start adding reverb to this sound. Doesn't take much, maybe, you know, 20, 30%. And all of a sudden you get this like vintage orchestra sound. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, so let me show you another. So this is yet another filter. This is a standard stock Pro Tools plugin uh, that I've got high and low filters set up. So I'm gonna take some of the high end off and a bunch of the low end off and make it even more narrow. So you don't need isotope vinyl. You can do this with a standard stock, you know, plug-in. Just use the filters. Get the filters nice and steep. See, I have 24 dB per octave, which is a pretty, you can see uh, by these curves, that's a pretty steep curve. And I'm just rolling off everything above 5K and everything underneath uh, uh, 470 hertz, basically. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you with the uh, UAD Cambridge EQ, this has my favorite filter section. Look how steep that filter is, uh, this one right here. And this is, so in on the Cambridge it's elliptic 6. It's the, these basically go from least uh, drastic to most drastic. So I have an elliptic 6 filter on the bottom, and then I have a kind of a more gentle one on the top. It's probably like a Bessel 3 or something like that. So I'm kind of gently rolling off, but I'm rolling off a lot of high end and a lot of low end. And let's see what this sounds like. So again, maybe you start a song off like this, you know, maybe it's like you want to get this vintage vibe going that just opens up into something much more modern. Maybe you do a filter sweep. get that really dark uh, string sound then you add some uh, reverb to that as well and this is what you get. Okay so 101 different ways to use filters and reverb on strings. I'm gonna deactivate that. Alright back to our source sound. Now I'm going to show you how to make standard strings feel like tremolo strings. Uh, there's this plugin that Sound Toys makes called Tremolator. Really cool. There we go. But uh, you know, Logic has a tremolo plugin. Probably most other things have a tremolo plugin as well. Uh, so let me just see how this sounds as the stock one that comes up. So you see it's it's doing an eighth note at 120, which is not very fast. Let's hear a sixteenth note at 120. Now see the depth on this tremolo is all the way down. If you don't know what a tremolo is, a tremolo is basically a volume curve that just does this to your audio. It just constantly moves the fader up and down on it. Uh, and the depth is how, how, how far down it, it pulls your audio before it put, brings it back up. We're starting to get there, but it still sounds a little fake. You try 30-second note.
So that sounds pretty good to me. So basically what I ended up with was uh, just a little bit of depth on the tremolo. It doesn't go uh, that deep and I've got 30 second notes going at about 100 BPM and it gives this effect like the string players are, are I don't know if you've ever seen string players play but if you know the bow is going nice and smoothly across the strings then it sounds like you know that's the string players just playing this real gentle bowing uh, but if the string players were playing what's called tremolo uh, which is when they move the, the bow really fast uh, uh, around the, uh, you know, against the strings and gives this, uh, this kind of resin tremolo -y effect. This is what I'm mimicking. All right, moving on. Uh, now, take an acoustic guitar, which sounds like this. Some of you may recognize that guitar from something else, one of my favorite songs and lessons. Uh, so I'm going to start with, like to me, this guitar sounds really thin. It doesn't have much bottom. It doesn't have much top. It's kind of this really narrow mid-rangey acoustic, and I want to turn it into something with a lot more character. So I'm actually going to try and improve the sound of this, not necessarily turn it into something else. But without using equalization, I'm going to try and you know, kind of bring more life to this thing. So the first thing I'm going to try is a uh, some saturation. Sound Toys Decapitator. Uh, again, you know, all of these uh, DAWs have their own kind of distortion plugins or overdrive plugin. I'm not going to distort this guitar. I'm going to just give it a little bit of overdrive. And uh, let me show you what it does and what it sounds like. I'll go too far and then I'll back off to something that sounds good. So basically what that saturation does, it, you know, it gives it a little bit of compression so it evens out the notes a little bit, but it just gives it a little bit more like harmonic content in the, you know, in the, in the sounds itself. Uh, and it just gives it this just edge of fuzz like you're overdriving a tube, but just slightly. Uh, so... So that's step one. Then I'm going to use this plugin called a, uh, a Kush Clarifonic. Love this thing. Okay, so Kush Audio also makes an outboard version of this, which I have the outboard version too, and it's spectacular. But the Clarifonic, when it comes down to it, the Clarifonic is basically a tone control. And a, a tone control basically means you know, you're kind of gently sloping the high frequency or low frequency of a sound as opposed to, you know, really digging in like with a parametric EQ or a graphic where you're really focusing in on one sound. This kind of just gives things a gentle shape, kind of like a Poltec, but more broadband. Uh, so I'm going to add some like top end crispness, crispness to this with uh, the Clarifonic and let's see where it gets us. It's just a tone control. It's kind of like taking the high frequency on your stereo and, and turning it up a little bit. Only this is much smoother with almost no phase shift. Uh, and it's, a, it's just a really beautiful, smooth way to uh, change sound. And the, the left knob here is more of like a low to mid-range uh, altering. You can kind of hear it right around the 1K area with this thing starting to kind of bring some more life to the sound. OK, 
okay, I really like what the top end of this acoustic is doing now, but it's got no, it's got no low end. It's got no, uh, you know, warmth and bigness to it. So I'm going to try another non-traditional plug-in, the Aphex Big Bottom. Now this thing is a super severe plug-in. Uh, it sounds great, but in but it's really a little goes a very long way with this. Uh, and so I'll, I'll just show you the basics of, of how to use this. If anybody saw my uh, uh, Jeremiah 50 Cent Down On Me video, I used something called Max Bass on 50 Cent's vocal. This is a very similar uh, plug-in to Max Bass. Uh, it, you know, it, it's not the exact same thing, but it's kind of the same theory. And, uh, and it, it's a nice way to warm up sounds uh, without equalization. It's a different it's a different sound and it's a different approach than you can't really get the exact same uh, sound from an equalizer. So uh, I've centered my, let's center this around 200 hertz. Uh, and then I'm just going to start adding a little bit as I, as I push up the drive, you'll hear uh, it start adding. And real quickly, it's going to start getting much fuller. So if you've never used a plugin like this, I mean these often have just uh, spectacular results when you have a sound that's too thin and you need it to be kind of much more broadband. Say you have a singer who, you know, is maybe has just a really thin voice or uh, was recorded on a really thin microphone and you know they should be bigger and fuller. Uh, you know, try something like a uh, Aphex Big Bottom or uh, you know Max Bass or UAD makes the the Vogue uh, Voice of God plugin. All of these kind of do similar things. Vogue I find usually works better with uh, set sounds like a kick drum, where the tone of it is never going to change, and you can kind of center the frequencies that you really want to bring out of that kick drum with Vogue. Uh, much more easily. Uh, something like Big Bottom uh, is much better at, at shaping, you know, uh, broad sounding instruments that aren't, that are going to be playing different notes and different chords and stuff like that. Alright, my last trick with, a, with this acoustic, uh, if you notice when uh, the player is strumming it's it's kind of a little too clicky uh, on the upper you know on the top end now that we've added the clarifonic it really opens up that top end really nicely and makes it nice and bright and open but then the attack of the pick on the strings is a little too much so believe it or not I'm going to use a de -esser to knock back those frequencies but only when the pick attack happens so I'll set this up to maybe 8k uh, if you don't know how to use a de-esser, a de-esser uh, basically is designed to uh, uh, minimize the harsh S and T frequencies, that tss, 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 those kind of things in a voice. But I also use it uh, for acoustic guitars. If, you've ha you know, if you have an acoustic guitar player and uh, every time they switch chords, it squeaks like crazy. If you record these a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where the fingers on the strings really squeak, and it's this piercing high-frequency squeak. And every now and then, uh, that just ruins a performance, but a de can save your life on those things. And same with this, when the, the, uh, the overall sound sounds really good, but the, the attack of the pick on the strings is a little too much. So listen to how this kind of pulls it back a little bit. you can see it, it's only pulling back, and it's only pulling back on the high frequency only when that pick hits the strings. The, the rest of the time it leaves it wide open, so you still retain all of that nice beautiful top end that the, the acoustic has now. And again, here's the original source sound with everything bypassed. Much 
better. All right. Uh, next thing I'm going to try is uh, Amplitude. So, a lot of times, you know, if I have a, a boring acoustic or, you know, I just don't like what the acoustic is doing or I want to look for new, interesting, different ways to manipulate it, uh, I'll put an amplifier plug-in on it. One of my favorites is uh, Amplitude 3 or any of any of the uh, incarnations of Amplitude work really well. And uh, so check this out. Um, well, the, first off, the first thing I did, if you'll notice, was I gained the uh, the wave file way down. So this is at, like, this wave file on Pro Tools is at plus 12. This is at plus 3. So I, in essence, I turned the source down 9 dB because... Uh, Amp plugins are meant to be driven with guitar uh, sounds, and a, and a guitar before it's amplified is usually pretty low level, so uh, it doesn't drive it very hard. Uh, you know, I tend to feed lower level, um, lower volume levels into an amplifier to get the desired results. But here's Amplitude uh, with this uh, acoustic guitar. cooler already. So, you know, the other thing, especially if you're new and, and you're like, you know, should I use presets? I don't know. Uh, I, I frown on using presets when it's like, you know, you have a kick drum and you dial up the kick drum EQ preset. That to me is a complete waste of time because, you know, one EQ is not going to work for every kick drum. That's ridiculous. But to me, the, the super creative way to use presets is uh, like I'm going to show you now. So I put on Amplitude. You know, the, the stock way it comes up is pretty cool. I like it. But I'm just going to start scrolling through presets and, and see if I can find something that's like an aha moment. Like, wow, this is really incredible. Uh, so let's just scroll through a bunch of presets and see what it sounds like. Imagine how completely transformative that could be to your production or your mix. You know, just taking this kind of boring do-nothing acoustic and turn it into this. I've got a lot of plugins running right now. Apparently, it did not like that at all. Uh, so I'll just go through a couple more so you can hear just some more variations. It's just incredible the the you know, amount of variation that you can get, uh, you know, from just one uh, plug-in. It's, it's really incredible. Uh, so one more thing I want to show you. I'm, you know, I'm going to go back to this because I really like the way this chain came out. And I'm going to show you one more mind-blowing thing that you may have never thought of. Uh, I'm going to put a sh very short stereo delay on this. And I'm not going to walk you through every single thing I'm doing, to, but look at, you know, pause it and look at my settings. So you'll, first you'll see there's no, mix on the left, so this is the left side and this is the right side. Uh, so let me show you what this sounds like first.
Okay, the only thing I am doing to this sound is I'm keeping the left side completely dry and I'm basically putting a 15 millisecond delay on the right side. You know, you could do this by running it into an aux and panning the dry left and the aux right. This, I'm just getting everything done with one plug-in. Pretty amazing stuff. Okay, let's move on. Vocals, lead vocals. All right. Finally took some time to... Actually, I'm gonna deactivate these so I can free up some... Yep, free up some DSP because, wow, I'm really pushing my system to the limits right now. Okay, so here's a just a dry vocal as recorded. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted. Now I'm, I just inserted uh, a stock Pro Tools Air Fuzz Wah. And uh, let me bypass the fuzz and the wah. Here's what this does. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. It's a stock plug and it comes with Pro Tools. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Day. But it gets better. Let me add the wah. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle. So this is a great example of just, you know, throwing some random plug-in on it that you think might have something cool and just literally turning knobs until you find something that is cooler than what you had before. I do that so often, especially when I'm creating, you know, but also when I'm mixing. I mean, if I'm, if I'm stuck in a mix and I just, you know, man, nothing's working, I'll just start throwing on random plug-ins and, uh, I mean, you know, I have a pretty good idea of, of what I want or what I can go to, but, uh, but I'll start throwing on plug-ins and just doing things like this and just seeing, you know, uh, what, what kind of responses I get and, uh, and how the knob turning is, is going. And then if I stumble on something that I think works really well, uh, but I want to keep looking, then, you know, you can go and save settings and you save settings as. So, you know, you could save this as, um, you know, coloring boxes one. So now I can get back to that, so, uh... Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Finally... And I'm right back to my old setting. So that's Fuzz Wah. Pretty cool. Uh, let me go to this thing from AudioEase called Speakerphone 2. This thing... You know, it's definitely one of those things that's a special effect type of a box, but man, what you can manipulate with sound on this is really incredible. Uh, and it's all these different, uh, you know, kind of sample curves of just um, things that, that uh, AudioEase sampled and then runs your audio through as if it was going through that device. So here's a horn. I'm just going to scroll through a bunch of presets. I just want to show you the basics of what this thing does so you have an idea. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted. Let it slip away. Blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen... 
I won't get into everything that this plugin does, but you, you start to get an idea of just how you can sit with a sound for 10 minutes and scroll through, you know, a hundred different presets on this until you find that one aha moment that's like, wow, I would have never thought about how to get that. You know, you can't get that kind of a thing with an equalizer or probably you can't even get it with a string of 10 other plugins. There's just, you know, some of these idea boxes that uh, uh, I often find myself just, you know, putting something like speakerphone on and going through preset after preset after preset. And anything I like, you know, I'll either write it down and remember it and then go back and compare or I'll save as a new preset and, and so I can audition things. Uh, but speakerphone is definitely one of those really cool creative idea boxes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it. Okay, moving on. It does a lot more than that, but that's a pretty good... Uh, all right. Prepare to have your mind blown. If you don't know what this plugin is, there's a bunch of different types. All right. So this is uh, Waves Morphoder. Uh, it's a vocoder plugin. There's a bunch of different vocoder plugins on the market. They're all slightly different. Uh, I don't really try and use them as vocoder uh, type things. I use them as idea boxes. So, uh, so here's your standard. Uh, and I'm also not going to try and show you how to use a vocoder. You know, get one. Dem you know, demo somebody's and, and play with it and just see all of the different crazy things that it does. And this does some really crazy things. So uh, I know that the key of this is C major. Uh, so I'm going to first, I'm going to load a preset called Major Tom. And all right, oh, this is already... So let's see what this sounds like. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the now you can also add the dry source signal and blend it in with this. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted. That's a pretty cool setting. Uh, so, and again, it, it's got all these different kind of preset uh, source sounds. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York. Alright, so now, so I've got this like, you know, and again, this might be like a transitional thing that you just use for like a one bar breakdown or a two bar breakdown or something. And, you know, you have this like standard lead vocal and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, this, you know, this comes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. But let's make this even cooler. Let me add a delay line. So I'm going to add, uh, let's do Echo Boy. All right, so I'm going to add a ping pong uh, delay to this. 
And uh, I know that the tempo on this is 156, so I'm going to dial that in. And uh, I'm going to keep, because I'm inserting this on the channel, I, I've got to balance the wet-dry mix. So I'm going to do a ping-pong, which basically means that the first repeat's going to be in the left speaker, second in the right, third in the left, fourth in the right, and it's going to bounce around like that. Uh, so listen to how this delay enhances that morph odor feel. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your... I think that's one of the coolest tricks I have. I love that. Uh, okay, so let's put that away. All right, now I'm going to show you a whole string of different effects on the same vocal. Uh, I've, I've got them all loaded in. I'm going to add them one by one and kind of uh, show you what I'm doing. The first is just like a standard severe auto-tune setting. Uh, the song is in the key of E major, so I've dialed in my key C, sorry, C major, not E major. Uh, I just caught myself doing that. Uh, so here's the dry, and then I'll add uh, auto-tune in, and you'll hear it kind of pull that little bit of a, like a T-Pain effect. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Now, a lot of times, uh, the way I will use auto-tune creatively as a producer, and sometimes as a mixer if I know my clients are up for it or if I'm mixing my own stuff, is, uh, you know, I'll copy my lead vocal and I'll take maybe one or two words out of a, out of a line, uh, every third or fourth line or just you know wherever I feel like it's creative and I'll take those and I'll copy the exact same vocal chain to another track but then at the end of that track or somewhere in that uh, that second track I'll put this auto-tune setting on and I'll only drop certain words on it so it kinda it gives you the effect of like if you did this Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. See how you can kind of look at different ways to use these same effects. It doesn't have to be the super drastic uh, auto-tune the entire time. Uh, you can use these really sparingly and, you know, give the ear these aha moments like, you know, you're listening to this, you know, normal lead vocal, then out of nowhere it just super pitches itself for a, for a, you know a split second and then you're back to the normal performance and and it and it gives the result of you know the listener kind of being woken back up and being like what the hell was that and you know it's like one of those moments so that's you know the auto tune I'm going to leave that on now I'm going to show you a super severe uh limiter setting on L1 so here's uh let me just Put the slider all the way up. So I've got the, you know, L1 attack is zero. It's super fast. And the release is like, this is the fastest release time of any compressor I've, uh, or limiter I've seen. So it's the fastest release, fast attack. Uh, and I'm going to just start pulling down the threshold so you can uh, hear the compression start to kick in. Then I'll get really severe with it. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the Now it's starting to compress right here. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. I'm just going to bypass the uh, auto-tune for now so you can just hear the, the effect of this. So basically what this does is, you know, he recorded this vocal, well, I recorded this vocal in a really dead, dry room with not much ambience, but when you super compress it like this, it actually brings any of the ambience that was in that room kind of to life. So you'll hear the in-betweens at the ends of the sound, you'll hear the room kind of come up and it's this like really angry, drastic sound. You'll also hear the breaths will come way up too. 
Uh, so you got to be careful with this. Sometimes you got to automate down the breaths or chop them out or something. But uh, but this, uh, you know, listen to how severe this gets. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. And if you record in a slightly more ambient room, that effect is going to be 10 times greater. So I'm going to leave that on, put the auto-tune back on. Finally took some time. And then I'm going to add uh, Meta Flanger. And, uh, and so this is, you know, let me just get to a full reset. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy... So I'm going to put it all the way stereo, 90 degrees. 90 on the metaflanger is wide. After that, you start getting into phase. Uh, on a flanger, uh, if you've got this really short... Uh, flange going on. If you dial up the feedback, it gives you kind of a more resonant effect. Check this out. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. And then I'm going to add Echo Boy to this whole thing. Again, you know, just a... Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, play, play. And finally, let me add some reverb to that whole chain. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. So you start to see how you can really give yourself just a ton of more creative sounds, which all started just with this source. Finally took some time to gather pieces of... All right. Uh, let me show, I'm going to deactivate this. Uh, I'm only deactivating this stuff because I'm really pushing my system to the max and I don't want it to keep choking during the lesson. Uh, so one more thing I'm going to show you with this uh, vocal. There's this other Waves plugin called Mondo Mod, which I adore. Um, at its basic, this is what it comes up. It's just like a pan program, but that's not what I use it for. Finally took some time to gather. I usually use on... Uh, on Mondo Mod, this thing called Full Rotor, which uh, mimics the the rotor speaker in a like a in like a Leslie organ, uh, like a church organ. Finally, it took some time to gather. And I bet if you're listening in headphones, you're really dizzy right now. So uh, if you bring down the BPM, it slows down the rotation of the rotor. Finally, it took some. Time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted. So again, I'll use this effect as like usually a transitional effect. Say, you know, I have a really aggressive song and I want the bridge section to be this kind of really just floaty, ambient, weird kind of in the background bridge. I'd probably start with this so that the vocal is just kind of panning around and you don't really know where it is. Fine. It took some time to gather peace. Now I'm going to add this uh, plugin called Driver, which is uh, uh, Native Instruments. Uh, they were giving this thing away for free at first. I think it's like a $30 plugin, and I use it constantly. It is really a cool plugin. Uh, I don't totally understand how it works. I just know that it gives me these really cool 
uh, uh, different colors to the sound. And, and that's the thing. Like, you don't really have to know how every single thing that you do works. You just have to know that you can't be afraid to look for new ideas and look for creative new ways to, uh, you know, discover and build and uh, create new sounds and kind of customize them and, and make them your own. And whenever you stumble across a new sound when you're, when you're going through just new plugins like this, I mean, you know, when I got Driver, I was like, ah, free plugin, it you know, probably sucks, it's not going to do very much. And then I started playing with it. I didn't know, you know, res knob, I don't know what this does, frequency, whatever. I just started turning knobs, and all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is a really cool plugin. So, you know, if you stumble across something really good, save it as a preset and try it on something else later. But, you know, just turn knobs and see what happens. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York. First, let me take off Mondo Mod so you can hear Driver uh, by itself. Finally took some time to... Now, for whatever reason, if you turn resonance up too much, it starts, uh, like, feeding back. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on your heavy swollen eyes. And last but not least, I'm going to put uh, Echo Farm on this. And uh, I'll put the mix at zero and then I'll just add a bit in. Uh, and again, the way I found this one before, you know, as I was putting this lesson together, I just went through like 10 different presets on this and just tried a bunch until I found the one that I like the best. And this happens to be the one I like the best. Finally took some time to gather pieces of the puzzle in New York, New York. Take it for granted, let it slip away, blame it on you, have it swollen up. Time to gather pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. All right, lots of new ideas. Moving on. All right. Next, we have just a cello. Really good player. Sounds like a really nice cello, recorded well by yours truly. Now, uh, I, I put Amplitude on this, and again, before the lesson, I just scrolled through like a hundred presets until I found my favorite one, and this is my favorite change an apple into an orange preset. Check it out. <laughs> So again, that's just, you know, scroll through, here, let me just, you know, for the fun of it, let me just scroll through a bunch of presets and, and show you the range of what, you know, just a standard guitar plug-in, a uh, guitar amp plug-in can do to something like a cello.
So there's a bunch of new ideas for you. I'm going to take that same cello, and I'm just going to uh, put a standard delay line through it. This is H delay, stock, you know, Pro Tools plugin. You know, any of your DAWs will have something similar. Uh, so I'm starting with nothing, and I'm going to start dialing in some feedback. Now I know the tempo of the song uh, that this cello came from is 156, so I've already got that dialed in. And uh, I'm going to try uh, to do a ping pong quarter note with a little bit of feedback at 156. And right now it's totally dry and I'm, I'll engage it and then I'll just uh, go from dry to wet. <laughs> Right there, it almost sounds like a reverb and not a delay, uh, you know, within the mix. Beautiful. Now I'm going to filter the delay return a little bit. This, the filter. So when you filter a, a delay with this, it doesn't affect the, uh, the, the dry sound going in. It just affects what the delays coming out do. So I'm going to take the high frequency off of the delay so that you don't get the, the resin from the bow hitting the strings and you get this kind of warmer uh, delay spread coming back. Listen to this. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, now I just wanted to show a st like a standard saturation plugin on this. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this company, Klanghelm. Uh, you know, I picked this up cheap. It's just a saturator. Uh, so I'm starting with nothing, and I'm just going to add some drive. Now the thing I noticed about this is, uh, uh, well, here, watch, just watch what I do. <laughs> So this is one of those coloring boxes that, you know, probably on the right thing could be a really extreme sound, but with this it just gives it a little bit of saturation and just makes makes the vocal, or sorry, the vocal, makes the cello sound kind of richer and fuller, but also kind of brighter at the same time, and it's really not adding any volume to it. Right, maybe a little volume, but still. Moving on, we'll see what we got next. Alright, so the next sound I have is this standard guitar strum. Pretty boring. So, the first thing I want to try on this is uh, a reverb a mono to stereo so it spreads it out wide. All right, that's too deep and I lose too much of a sense of, of uh, the original sound. Uh, but I'm gonna go to Small Spaces and Studio F and, uh, and then I'm gonna back the mix off a little bit.
Oh, I love that. That sounds cool. So basically, I, I, I jacked up the pre-delay, which is how long it takes until you, the reverb comes out, basically to 250 milliseconds, which is a, quite a long time. Uh, it's a quarter of a second. So you hear this, you hear the initial strum, and see I have the mix backed off to 37%. So I'm, I'm adding some reverb, but you're still getting a lot of the dry signal. And, uh, but when the reverb hits, it kind of, it's like this brush. So it's, it's uh, this kind of delayed wash. Really long reverb time, five seconds. Let's just see what it sounds like at like 18 seconds. Okay, enough of that. So there's a bunch of different ways you can use a reverb just to tailor uh, a sound that you're working with. Uh, another thing that you can do with sound is reverse it. Uh, this is the perfect sound to do this with. Um, and I, and I'll, I'll do this a lot. Actually, I'll show you a really cool thing to do with this. So I'm going to take this standard strum and I'm going to use... Reverse, reverse. Every DAW has a reverse plugin. You see what it did? It just literally took, here I'll play them both together. Cool. All right, let me just deal with the reverse now. So you could take that if you're working on a song. This can be a really cool transitional element. You know, say you got uh, like the beginning of your song starts out with this really boring strum. which is this one. Big deal. But what if your song started and you took that initial strum and you just put it in so it leads up. So all I did was take the strum and reverse it and now this could be the intro to your song. See what I did there? Yeah, let me open it up so you can see it better. So here's the reverse sound. Here's the forward sound. So let's, uh, you know, let's actually use a guitar plug-in the way it's supposed to be used. would help if I I think that would be a much cooler start to a song uh, all right I'm gonna move on to ooh there's one other thing I wanted to show with uh, this strummy guitar thing uh, you know you can take a, a standard strum like that, I've taken that strum and I've just copied the, the initial part of it about that much and I've copied it four times and, and put it four times together. Let me open that up so you can see it better. There we go. Mute that. So here's the raw sound of that. Now I'm going to show you how to make a tremolo effect with a panner. Uh, Okay. 
So this is a stereo panner, Sound Toys Pan Man. They all, all the DAWs have them. So the width is nothing right now. I'm gonna, you'll see, I'm gonna put the width way out to the max, and I'm gonna smooth it out so it, it has this nice, soft, gentle back and forth. You can hear what this sounds like. What if we did this? What if I jacked the rate of the panning way up? Pretty cool. Instant instant not only tremolo but ear candy because now instead of just having a straight tremolo that's right in the middle of your speakers and only doing this kind of mono tremolo now you have that tremolo effect but it's it's hard panning to the left and right so so all of a sudden you have sound coming at you from all different directions and again this could be like a really transitional thing you know this could be like the setup to your hook maybe right before your hook uh, is you know All right, enough of that. Now, drum loops. Man, there are 501 different things you can do with drum loops. Let me show you a few. All right, what do we got? Uh, driver again. I'll show you. This is such a cool plugin. I really do use this quite a bit. So this is the standard drum loop with nothing on it. Now I'll engage driver and I'll just start adding some resonance. really not getting any louder on the VU meters or on the, even on the peak meters uh, but it's getting more compressed and this the driver has a way of I mean it does many things but in this case it, it seems to be uh, bringing the tone of the room that the drums were recorded in uh, into uh, you know into the audible range you could get much more severe with it. It's amazing how many different sounds you can get out of this one super cheap plugin that they were giving away for free. get the idea. Tons of fun. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just sitting here having fun with this. I'm not even paying attention to you guys right now. All right, let me get rid of that. Uh, now let's go to the standard. Uh, oh, this is like my favorite part of the entire lesson. All right, so uh, here is... All right. Prepare to have your mind blown. All right, more fodder on drums. This is really, really cool. Uh, so I've already got, uh, you know, there's, there is no key to drums. So I kind of played with this until I found a bunch of notes that I felt sounded really good with this. But let me just show you what I'm doing.
man, if you're a producer, you just came up with a new idea for a song. I mean, throw this on a drum loop and just start manipulating things until you find like just a really cool way that it bounces and then just start building a song around that. Now, if you have been paying attention, you see I actually have this third in the chain, but I have the ones pre, uh, preceding it deactivated. So let me take this, and I'm just going to add a, a gentle reverb uh, before it, just a medium plate and just a little bit. So I have 38% uh, wet-dry ratio on this plate, and just listen to what this does to the sound and the feel. Pretty cool. Now, one last thing. I'm going to leave this up so you can still see it. Uh, so, I toyed around and found the most amazing set on this uh, tremolator. Uh, like I showed you the tremolator earlier with uh, how to make standard pad strings into kind of tremolo strings. Listen to what this does. Uh, I've got it timed to tempo. So, the tempo of this drum loop is 101 BPM. So, I've got that dialed in. I've got uh, the rhythm set to straight 16th notes and I've got the depth all the way down and I've got this uh, soft square uh, on the uh, the shape of the tremolo itself so it's it's a really steep tremolo but it, it's not quite as severe as a, as a standard square wave so listen to what this does I mean, the possibilities are just endless, you know, and it's all, and, you know, I literally came up with all of these things kind of on the fly as I was putting this lesson together. I mean, you know, I have 21 years of making major label records of experience to kind of draw from, so I know how to use all of these things, but at some point in my career, this was all new to me, and all I did was play around and remember what I was doing and remember what all the cool things were. And anytime I stumbled across a really cool technique or effect, I would put it right into my mental toolkit, or I would write it down, or I would take a, you know, I would save the, the preset, or I would, uh, you know, take a screenshot just so I could remember what settings got me there and, and why. Uh, you know, I, 
once upon a time, a very long time ago, I used to be an assistant engineer uh, at, a, at a major studio in New York City. And I was just starting out and I was super green and I was working with all these huge engineers and, uh, uh, you know, guys that I still look up to today that are just amazing. And I had the, the biggest notebook that I would carry to every single session. And when I wasn't having to, you know, plug something in or do something directly for the engineer or the producer or the artist or something, uh, I was sitting there taking notes. And I, I would have notebooks just filled with different, you know, if I saw the engineer plug in a, you know, an effect or something, I would try and figure out just on my own what he was doing, why he was doing it, or she. I assisted for Angela Paiva a lot, and uh, she, man, she's gifted. And uh, so, you know, I'd watch like Tony Maserati or Angela Paiva or, you know, Charles Alexander or somebody like that. Uh, and they would do these things that just were blowing my mind. I had no idea you could even do some of the things that they were doing. And I would watch them work, and I'd just real quietly just try and figure it out on my own and write it down and take tons of notes. And then if I still didn't really understand what they were doing, I would, at the end of the session or at a good you know, moment, I would ask them. And especially those three in particular really would always take the time to kind of show, you know, take time out of their session either afterwards or at a break point and really show you and uh, tell you what they're doing and why they're doing it and why they were inspired to try that particular thing. And honestly, uh, you know, some of those events uh, were what inspired me to do audio school uh, because I feel like I gained so much knowledge from those people and, you know, I wanted to give, a, you know, give it back. So, uh, so here I am. So anyway, that's a little preachy, but uh, but might give you some insights into my past and how old I am, which is very. Uh, all right, let me deactivate that. On to the next. All right, now we're going to go uh, standard. Um, uh, you know, we've done this a lot already. I'm not going to spend much time on it. Uh, let's, let's use a different one. We know Amplitube is the coolest thing on Earth. Let me go to uh, UAD has this soft tube vintage amp room, which sounds really, really cool. So here's just how this is going to be really severe. Listen to that kick drum. That is the coolest thing. You know, I would probably sample that as its own. I'd find kind of a, an exposed hit, and I would, you know, just bounce the audio to a new track and just sample that kick. Listen to how cool that kick drum sounds. I mean, it almost has, like, this really electronica sound to it. It's, man, I, I could imagine that being a really cool, like, four-on-the-floor kick. how ringy that snare gets uh, you know distortions are really good for kind of making boring snares uh, sound really interesting uh, you know sometimes I'll put just a like a snare sample through a through an amp like this or something and if you just listen to the snare in the loop you know you'll you'll hear what it does to it. You could spend all day playing with that. But, you know, I'll use uh, uh, amps on, on drums and drum loops and, and stuff like that all the time. 
again, uh, usually transitionally or for like a special section. But every once in a blue moon, I'll base an entire song around, you know, distorting the drum kit. Yeah, you know, the other thing that I love to do is if I have a fully tracked out drum kit, sometimes I'll put like a, a, an amp or something just on, say, if I have a mono room track, and I'll get a really nice, pristine sounding drum sound going, you know, big and heavy, and everything sounds really good, but it's kind of devoid of any of its own uh, unique character. Then I'll take the, the, the single like mono room track and I'll throw an amp across it and I'll distort the heck out of it and then I'll just tuck that way up underneath the signal. You don't need much of it at all. And all of a sudden your drum kit kind of comes alive and it has this really gritty sound to it. And, uh, and it also it helps the ear, in a, in especially in a dense mix, it helps the ear kind of latch on to what the drums are doing and it, and it just gives the drums more presence and character uh, so, you know, try that on, you know, the whole kit or just a, an individual track. Maybe only the, the snare has it or something like that. Uh, okay, so enough drums. Last thing I'm going to show you, another... I almost didn't want to give this one away. This is, this is really good. Uh, well, not this one. I'll get to it. Uh, so, first thing, this is cool too. Uh, I'm just going to use a regular L1. And... Uh, fairly, you know, moderate release, 75 milliseconds, and I'm going to really compress the heck out of the piano, and, well, first, let's just listen to the piano so we know what we're getting into. Okay, nice piano, but kind of boring, doesn't have much character to it. Uh, you know, there's 50 different ways to add character. I'm going to start with an L1. So actually, you know, if you look at, at peak volume right now, the peak volume is probably lower than the original sound is, uh, but because, let's see if I can prove that. Okay, here's in bypass, so this is just what the sound is on its own. So I'm hitting, you know, like minus 10 or so. So let me add this. I'm even lower than that. So. Peak volume-wise, this isn't even as loud as, as the non-compressed version, uh, but I'm bringing up so much of kind of what's buried underneath the sound, you know, the, the lower resonances of the, of the instrument, and I'm bringing those out with heavy compression uh, that it, it, it appears to be louder uh, with this on than the other way. And the RMS is louder, you know, the average volume is louder with this plug-in, but the peak volume is much lower. Do you hear how you can get a lot of sustain out of those chords? You know, the chords at first, they hit and they just kind of die off and that's and they just go away. But with with a technique like this, all of a sudden you get this uh, really rich piano sound. believe I'm running out of CPU power. It's one cheap little limiter plug-in is doing all that. Okay, moving on. Let me deactivate that. All right, so I'm actually going to keep that limiter on because I think it'll be a cool effect on this.
but now I'm going to add this filter. If you can see, I've got really steep filters on the bottom and the top, and uh, then I'll add this EQ in. Well, let me just add them one at a time. Okay, so here's dry. So you get that old real kind of vintage sound to it. Uh, and then I'm going to give it like a radio effect so it, it has like a more severe mid-range to it. Pretty cool. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to do is leave all of that stuff on, but but again, put it through a reverb and make it sound like it's just being played from some faraway place. This is kind of like a slap reverb, uh, so here's fully wet, you can hear. And then if you added just like a regular hall. You know, sometimes I'll do this at the end of a song. I'll, I'll automate a reverb, and I'll automate the, uh, the mix of it, and I'll start dry, and as the song fades out, I'll just automate the mix uh, up from zero to a hundred percent over time. Let me do that right now and you can hear what I'm talking about. And then you kind of ride that down and you can see as you know you get this effect like you're just walking away from your song uh, I love that effect I do that all the time well not all the time but when it's appropriate all right let me get rid of that show you my last trick of the day this one is worth waiting for so sometimes you know I'll do this as a producer not really as a mixer it's too extreme for that uh, but uh, you know, sometimes you have this really just kind of standard piano or, you know, something, whatever it is. Kind of boring, not much character to it. Uh, so one day I decided to try and just stretch it out and then stretch it back and see what kind of artifacts I get. And it turned out to be the coolest thing ever. It doesn't always work out, but, you know, trial and error. Make sure you're not doing this to something that you can't get back to your dry source. Um, all right, so here I have uh, an eight-bar uh, piano loop. I'm going to stretch this to, say, you know, hang on. Let me put this on grid so I can really tell what I'm doing. Let me stretch this to ten bars. So it's going to get slower. Let's see what kind of artifacts I get with stretching it, uh, you know, by tw it's basically 25%. So already you're getting some kind of wow and flutter in it, some kind of odd sounding artifacts. 
Now, I'm going to stretch it back to where it was, but remember, I'm not undoing what I just did. What I just did is now committed to audio, so I'm taking that audio and I'm stretching it again, which will give me even more artifacts, but, but it will put it back to its original tempo. Alright, so now we're back at the original tempo and playing speed, but now I've stretched it out and I've pushed it back. And let's see how many artifacts we have now. To me, that's just the coolest thing ever. You know, you can take a really uninteresting piano uh, or, you know, whatever, and turn it into something that you're like, how, you know, is it broken? Is it, you know, did somebody like kick one of the legs out of the piano? How did I, how did you get this sound? And that's how I got it. And again, the way that I got that, I swear to you, is I, I was, you know, I was producing a song and I had this boring piano and I was like, how do I make this not boring? And I was like, eh, you know, let me try and stretch it out and stretch it back and see what happens. It's all trial and error. This whole thing is just experience and trying different things, letting your mind wander, letting your creativity take over, and, you know, just trying any kind of thing that you can imagine and seeing what happens. And, and you know, in, in today's day and age, with DAWs, as long as you can get back to your original source... You can undo any mistakes you make, or if you do something and it sounds terrible, you can always get back to your dry thing and try again. So with this, you know, let me try stretching it out two more bars, and then back again. So now it's been, now it's been stretched out, back, out, back, and let's see how many more artifacts we have. Now I'm going to add that limiter to it and see, uh, now you'll really be able to hear those artifacts come out. All right, so you know, I haven't used every plugin on the planet. I, there's, you know, I could go through 50 more plugins and show you 50 more things, and maybe I'll do a coloring boxes too, if uh, if this lesson is really well received. But you know, my goal with this lesson is to just open up your creativity, open up your eyes to the possibilities of what you can create with sound. You know, we live in an age now where the sky is the limit. You are only limited by your own creativity, your own ability to envision what you want or to just, you know, play with sounds until you stumble across something cool that you never would have thought to create. And here we are. We got this crazy piano sound or we got a, you know, uh, acoustic guitar running through an amplifier or a vocal running through a morph odor or, you know, who knows? Sky's the limit. So I, I always encourage you you know, any time that anybody tells you, you know, oh, that's the wrong way to do things, or, you know, the right way to do it is blah, 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 you know, I, I, there are right and wrong ways to do, like, you know, there's a right way to record Adele's vocals. You wouldn't record Adele's vocals with a 57 if you wanted, if you were doing, you know, Set Fire to the Rain or something like that. You would use a, you know, great tube mic or something like that. So sure, there are some rules that are there, you know, on purpose, but as far as audio goes, there really are no rules. Anybody who tells you, oh, that's not the right way to use a compressor or that's not, the right way to use something is, the, is what sounds right to you. And that's it. Because what sounds right to you, the other person may not have even ever tried in their life. Or maybe they tried it and their vision for it didn't come together like yours is. And, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff to learn, but there's, there is no right and wrong. Right and wrong is what you make of it. So I highly encourage you to always just be creative. You know, think around the bend. You know, listen to a sound and just ask yourself, what could this be? What can I turn this into? And, uh, and let, your, you know, let your imagination run wild and start you know, throwing things on it or stretching it and pitching it and putting plugins on it and see where you can take it and then where that creativity sparks even more. 
So that's all I got. Ken Lewis, Audio School Online, coloring boxes. Take care.